Hi, I'm Steve. This is the first in a series of videos on how to make generative art if you've never coded before. Be sure to watch all the videos in order because they build on each other. In this video, we'll go over the very basic concepts and tools you need to start making generative art. We're going to have fun and you're going to make beautiful art. I don't know what you're going to make, but I can't wait to find out. So let's get started. If you're going to learn programming, you can't just watch videos about it. You actually have to do it. So I want you to get a second browser window open. If you have a second screen, you can put it there. You're going to watch the video on one window and you'll be coding along with me on the other. Pause the video anytime you need to. So on that second screen, I want you to go to p5js.org. This is the main page for the P5 library. The JS stands for JavaScript. I'll talk about that in a minute. Now click on Editor right here. And now click on the arrow button at the top left. This gray box is called the canvas. That's where our art will appear. And the stuff on the left is the code. Right now it's telling JavaScript to make a canvas and then give it a gray background. We can change the color of the background. If we do 20 instead of 220, we get almost black. Let's try 150. And let's change this. This is create canvas. If we change this to 500, it gets wider. We can change this to 500 and it gets taller. Let's go to the end of the background. We'll hit enter and I want you to type circle open parentheses 200 comma 200 comma 300. And if you have to hit enter, uh, now I've got this auto refresh on, so if you don't have that auto refresh on, go ahead and click that so that the code updates as you're typing stuff. So we've made a circle. Let's try changing this number at the end. What does that do? We've made the circle smaller. Let's try changing this number from 200 to 100. It shifted to the left. How about this one? We'll change this from 200 to 100. It shifted up. So this is the X position on the screen, this is the Y position, and this is the diameter of the circle. Congratulations, you're already coding. All right, I'm gonna pause this coding so I can give you a bit of context about what we're doing. Right now we're coding in JavaScript. It's the most popular programming language among generative artists, so that's what we'll be learning but not just JavaScript, we'll be learning something called P5JS, which is a library of JavaScript. A library is sort of like an add-on to the coding language. It gives us some additional tools to make it easier to program. Let's leave our program there, open up a new tab and go back to p5js.org. Here you have all sorts of information about the P5 library. It was created by the Processing Foundation, a nonprofit dedicated to helping people learn to code. If you click on this reference button, you'll see all sorts of information about the functions in P5JS. Functions are like commands, things you want the computer to do. Each one of these has a page that goes into detail about what it is, the circle here, and how to use it, and there's examples. This is very handy, so you might want to bookmark this reference page. The other useful resource I'm going to want you to bookmark is this JavaScript reference page. It's kind of a long URL, so I'm going to link that in the video description. But this has information on functions that are native to JavaScript. That means you can code with these commands even if you don't have the P5 library added. So definitely bookmark this. In fact, you probably want to create a folder for all your coding bookmarks. Let's go back to our code. When you type in circle plus a parentheses after it, you're calling a function. As I said, a function is like a command, and the stuff inside the parentheses are called arguments. The arguments are specific instructions for that function. In this case, the first two arguments are numbers for the x and y coordinates, and the third argument is for the diameter of the circle. Let's talk about x and y coordinates. You probably remember in math class plotting points on an x and y axis. It's similar here, but a little different. For the x, instead of the zero in the middle of the screen, the zero is all the way on the left. And in this case, we've got a 500 screen, so 500 is all the way on the right. For the y axis in your math class, zero started in the middle and increased as you went up. But in coding, zero starts at the top 
and increases as you go down. So this is zero and this is 500 height. These numbers for the create canvas and also for the X and Y of the circle represent pixels, tiny little dots. Now you might notice that there's this word function right here and here, but the circle is called a function, right? Well, not exactly. Actually, we're calling a function because the actual circle function is hidden inside the P5 library. And that function has math in it to use a bunch of pixels to draw a circle. These are special functions in P5, set up and draw. And actually you can draw with either one of them, but this draw is a loop. You can't really see it, but this is drawing the background and the circle over and over again. And this section can be used to animate things. We'll do a little bit of animating down the line. This section in setup is for anything that needs to be done before you get to the draw loop, such as setting up the canvas. The setup function will always run before the draw function runs. Let's move the circle back to the center. And I want you to enter here and we're going to type in fill uh, 150, say. And we have a gray circle. Let's change that background to a black background. There we go. So we've just changed the color of the circle. Now what would happen if we move this background down below where it says circle. In programming, just like a lot of other apps, you can block in things, hit control X, control C, control V. So I'm gonna hit control X and then move the background down here and the circle's gone. Well, the program is executing from the top down. So the order of operations is important. Let's put it back to where it was before. Now, what happens if we misspell the word circle? We'll put sickle. And the circle didn't get drawn, of course, but if you see down here, something showed up. We can drag this part up. This is called the console. And we have this here if we need to scroll up or we can use the scroll bar on the mouse. It says circle sickle is not defined. P5JS says sketch JS line eight. So it's telling us which line the error is in. And it's also highlighted it a little bit here. Uh, it seems you may have accidentally written sickle instead of circle. Ah, it's smart. Please correct it if you wish to use the function the circle. So we'll change that back to circle. We're just about done, but I want to go over a couple more things. You're going to want to save your programs. Not all of them, maybe, but some of them. To do that, you need to sign up with P5JS. Signing up is free, and remember this editor is run by a nonprofit, and as far as I can tell, they don't sell your email or send you lots of annoying messages. So you can sign up right here at the top right. Go ahead and do that, pause the video until that's done. Okay, so now that we're signed in, if we go to the top, we can click File, Save, and the sketch is saved. So this is called a sketch, and right here is the name of the sketch. P5 just comes up with a name for you, but you can change this to whatever you want. And if we click File, Open, you'll see all the sketches that you've made so far. And you can click on this to open it up. Now let's go back to the P5 reference page. And in the search bar, I want you to put in Fill. And then we'll click on this. So here we have information about Fill, about the arguments available, lots of examples. So we were only using one number in fill right here, but it looks like you can do more than one number. I see here also fill red. And I also notice these are squares, not circles. You can also edit these examples. If I hit edit, I can change this to, I don't know, 30 and then run. And now the square is a little farther down on the canvas. You can also copy this code and then paste it into your sketch. So I recommend you play around with this stuff. Just try stuff. You're not going to break anything. Playing around with stuff is an important part of coding generative art. It's a great way to learn and it's fun. And the worst thing that can happen is you get an error message. So that's it for today. You have written your first program, a tiny one. You can draw a circle. You can change its color, change its size, change the canvas size, change the background color, you know what it means to call a function. You've signed up and saved your program. You know where the reference pages are in case you want to look stuff up. That is a lot. 
I know I just threw a ton of stuff at you and it's only been, I don't know, 15 minutes maybe. I want you to know that I have a Discord channel where you can post your art or any questions you may have. Link is in the video description. In the next video, we're going to be exploring color. If you like this video, you can give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.